Hey, so you're getting started with Fusion 360 and you want to build a part like this. Or you look at this and they say, how would you build this? And how fast could you build this? This can feel really intimidating when you're just getting started. This can feel like, I don't know, a sweep and a loft and a bunch of different features or maybe one crazy sketch feature. So if you're like me, you're probably trying to do this in one sketch, which is crazy. So in this tutorial, we're going to cover the steps for building this part. And it's not as hard as it looks. Here we go. We'll begin by starting a sketch. I'll select the sketch command and choose a plane. I'm going to choose the front plane. Front or right plane would work in this case. The goal is to sketch an L shape. And there's a couple ways we could get there. We could start by just sketching from the origin, going up, and then sketching another line. Click that line again and sketching over. When you're done, you can just hit escape on your keyboard and that will um, you know, stop that command. Now, what I want to do is add some dimensions. If your units are not in inches, maybe go change it now. Go find your inches or millimeters. If you'd like to do it that way, you can. And I'm going to add a smart dimension. I'll hit D on the keyboard, D for dimension, and place that first dimension. And I'll do 1.6. Let's make this match. And there are relationships that we could do to make them equal. But in this case, we'll just be doing both as dimensions for the moment. Now, what we can do is there's a command for creating a copy of the same thing, but at a distance. Let's introduce the offset command. So I'm going to use a search for S for search. And that brings up my shortcuts as well as this awesome search tool. So I'm going to hit offset and choose that. And I'll select this line and the other. And it lets you drag you know, different directions on you know, the inverse or the inside or outside, depending. And I'm going to drag it out a little bit, but then type in a value of 0.4. OK, so once you put in 0.4, hit OK. And now we can finish this off by just sketching the lines to close it off. Great. So we're going to hit the extrude button and we'll do one and a half. Terrific. Now, what I'd like to do is uh, hollow this or remove some of the material. And this is really cool, this tool for shelling everything out. If you use your search, you can find shell, S for search, and then type in shell and you'll notice that it's right there on the toolbar as well. So what I'm going to do is select the back side and the bottom side. And what this does is it's removing material that's on these particular sides. And we're going to choose uh, the kind of bottom face there, top face, excuse me, and bottom face. So those two. And so it's going to keep these faces, but then add the thickness back. So what thickness do we want? Let's just type in a value of maybe 0.2. And you'll see the preview. So you can see it's creating this kind of um, you know, thickness on each of the remaining faces. Pretty slick. So it shells that out. And now we've got um, kind of maybe our first major step done for this model. OK, the next step is let's start another sketch. And we're going to start it out on this face. So I can select that face and use the sketch command. And what I'm going to do is look for the slot tool. And there's a bunch of different options here. We can do center to center. And I can drag this up. And then you click. And then it lets you drag a kind of rough size slot. And what we want to do is put in maybe a radius at the top. And the radius being 0.24. Great. And we'll do a height between the two points on the center line. And that height is 0.6. And you'll notice that you can still move this. And so it's important that we get this located in the right spot. And what I'd like to do is snap it until it hits the midpoint of this bottom edge. And that looks pretty good. Mine goes all dark, meaning fully constrained, meaning it has enough dimensions and relationships so that it knows where it sits and knows where it should be. 
And what we're going to do is create a solid from this. And you might be able to guess this is just an extrude like we did before. And I'm sure to select all the segments of it, it was breaking it up to be helpful. By default, mine wants to cut that red and the operation set to cut. I'm going to actually change it to, uh, let's do join. And that's going to make it all into one body. And I'd like to go until it hits this face. So I actually can just click that face and it types in that distance for me. Or I could set it to go to an object, um, but the distance will be acceptable for now. That's fine. All right, so now we want to cut out another slot in the middle here, in the center of that shape. So what we're going to do is choose to start a sketch on this face. And I'm going to go find that offset command, or excuse me, slot command. And lots of different options here. And so I'll click this same area and try that again. Slot tool, and we'll do center to center. Click these two centers, and I'm going to do just a little bit different this time, a little bit different shape. And I can add a distance between the two, or I can just do a radius. So let's do a distance of 0.15, and we're going to do an extruded cut. So I'll hit the extrude command. Let's finish out our sketch and find extrude. The cool thing with extrude is that it can be a cut or it can be adding material like we saw earlier. So I'm going to have it cut through and I want it to go all the way through and there's an intelligent way to do that. We'll choose all the way through, and hit OK. And now that's cut it through. Great. If you want to turn off your sketches briefly, you can turn off that visibility so you can see things just a little bit better. Terrific. Now for that final kind of ribbed tool at the top. So I kind of just gave it away. What I want to use is an or you know a plane that happens to run right in the middle of the part. So do I have any planes that happen to be in the middle? Mine are at the corner here. So had I kept the planes in the middle, that would have helped me. Luckily, there's an easy way to put one right in the middle, mid plane. Select the side and the other side, and it'll create a plane right in the middle. And so if I select this plane and start the sketch, then I can start my rib. And the rib is kind of simple from the sense that I'm going to do a line going up and align at an angle. Now I want to connect it. And the way I can do that is using constraints. So I'll select this endpoint and this endpoint and make them coincident. And I kind of want to do the same thing for right here. Great. And so I want this to make sure that, that it's connecting. I'll drag it down and that's finishing it out. So we have this kind of overall shape right? This outline of a shape, really. And what we want to do is use what's called the rib feature. So I'll hit S key and I'll choose rib or search for rib. There it is. And we're going to choose the lines. And now we can specify the thickness. And so let's do a rough thickness of maybe 0.2 inches. And we can set the value We'll flip the direction and we're going to solve to next. So it's going to solve until it hits this other object. Great. And that's looking good. We'll hit OK. Turn off the sketches briefly. So there you have it. You've got a pretty simple part that's really just made up of simple steps and features and that you can now send to your 3D printer or you could start to create the G code for your CNC. So if you're getting started with Fusion 360, check out my other beginner tutorials as well as my top 10 mistakes that I make when I'm sketching. Hope this helps. I'll see you guys in the next video.